My name's Kip. This is me. I had a cliche U.S. American childhood. My mom was a teacher, my dad was in the military, and I have one sister. I played all the sports growing up, but I always loved the outdoors and camping. Life was simple, not a care in the world. And then this guy showed up. Like so many of us, I saw his film An Inconvenient Truth about the impacts of global warming, and it scared the emojis out of me. In Al Gore's film, he describes how our Earth is in peril. Climate change stands to affect all life on this planet. From monster storms, raging wildfires, record droughts, ice caps melting, acidification of the oceans to entire countries going underwater, that could all be caused by humans' demands on the Earth. With scientists warning unless we take drastic measures to correct our environmental footprint, our time on this planet may be limited to only 50 more years. I wanted to do everything I could to help. I made up my mind right then and there to change how I lived and to do whatever I possibly could to find a way for all of us to live together sustainably forever. I became an OCE, Obsessive Compulsive Environmentalist. I separated the trash and recycling. I composted, changed all the light bulbs, took short showers, turned the water off when I brushed my teeth, turned off lights when leaving a room, and rode my bike instead of driving everywhere. But as the years went by, it seemed as if things were getting worse. I had to wonder, with all the continuing ecological crisis facing the planet, even if every single one of us adopted these conservation habits, was this really gonna be enough to save the world? It just seemed that there was something more to the story. I thought I was doing everything I could to help the planet. But then, with one friend's post, everything changed. The Post sent me to a report online published by the United Nations stating that cows produce more greenhouse gases than the entire transportation sector. This means that raising cattle produces more greenhouse gases than all cars, trucks, trains, boats, planes combined. 13% compared to 18% for livestock. This is because cows produce a substantial amount of methane from their digestive process. Methane gas from livestock is 25 to 100 times more destructive than carbon dioxide from vehicles. Here, I'd been riding my bike everywhere to help reduce emissions, but it turns out there's more to climate change than just fossil fuels. I started doing more research. The UN, along with other agencies, reported that not only did livestock play a major role in global warming, it is also the leading cause of resource consumption and environmental degradation destroying the planet today. How is it possible I wasn't aware of this? I thought this information would be plastered everywhere in the environmental community. It seemed the main focus for many of these groups was natural gas and oil production, with fracking being the latest hot issue due to water usage and contamination. Hydraulic fracturing for natural gas uses an incredible amount of water. A staggering 100 billion gallons of water is used every year in the United States. But when I compared this with animal agriculture, raising livestock just in the U.S. consumes 34 trillion gallons of water. And it turns out the methane emissions from both industries are nearly equal. Living in California, a state plagued by drought and water shortages, water use is a major concern for many of us. The average Californian uses about 1,500 gallons per person per day. Um, about half of that is related to the consumption of meat and dairy products. So meat and dairy products are incredibly water intensive, um, in part because the animals are using very water intensive grains. That's what they, they eat. Um, and so all of the water embedded in, in the grain and that the animal eats essentially is, is considered part of the virtual water footprint of that product. I found out that one quarter pound hamburger requires over 660 gallons of water to produce. Here I've been taking these short showers trying to save water and to find out just eating one hamburger is the equivalent of showering two entire months. So much attention is given to lowering our home water use, yet domestic water use is only 5% of what is consumed in the U.S. versus 55% for animal agriculture. That's because it takes upwards of 2,500 gallons of water to produce one pound of beef. When I added up all the government's recommendations, I was saving 47 gallons a day. But still, that's not even close to the 660 gallons of water for just one burger. I started doing more investigating on the impacts of livestock and found out the situation was actually worse than I had thought. In 2009, two advisors from the World Bank released an analysis on human-induced greenhouse gases, finding that animal agriculture was responsible not for 18%, as the UN stated, 
Bose actually 51% of all greenhouse gases, 51%, yet all we hear about is burning fossil fuels. This devastating figure is due to clear-cutting rainforest for grazing, respiration, and all the waste animals produced. This makes animal agriculture the number one contributor to human-caused climate change. But not only that, I found out raising animals for food consumes a third of all the planet's fresh water, occupies up to 45% of the Earth's land, is responsible for up to 91% of Amazon destruction, is a leading cause of species extinction, ocean dead zones, and habitat destruction. Concerned researchers of the loss of species uh, agree that the primary cause of loss of species on our Earth that we're witnessing is due to overgrazing and habitat loss from livestock production on land and by overfishing, which I call fishing, in our oceans. And we're in the middle of the largest mass extinction of species in 65 million years. The rainforest is being cut down at the rate of an acre per second. And the driving force behind all of this is animal agriculture, cutting down the forest to graze animals and to grow soybeans, uh, genetically engineered soybeans to feed to the cows and pigs and chickens and factory farm fish. 91% of the loss of rainforest in the Amazon area thus far to date, 91% that's been destroyed is due to raising livestock. 116,000 pounds of farm animal excrement is produced every second in the United States alone. That is enough waste per year to cover every square foot of San Francisco, New York City, Tokyo, Paris, New Delhi, Berlin, Hong Kong, London, Rio de Janeiro, Delaware, Bali, Costa Rica, and Denmark combined. Livestock operations on land has caused more than, five, or created more than 500 nitrogen flooded dead zones around the world in our oceans, comprise more than 95,000 square miles of areas completely devoid of life. So any meaningful discussion about the state of our oceans has to always begin by frank discussions about land-based animal agriculture, which is not what our conservation groups, Oceana being the largest one in the world right now, uh, the most influential, as well as others, that's not what is at the apex of their discussions. Marine environments are in trouble, and if we don't wake up and do something about it, um, we're gonna see fishless oceans by the year 2048. That's the prediction from scientists. The fact that when people look at fishing sometimes, they're only looking at the fact of the animals who are actually consumed by humans, and we're not necessarily looking at all the animals who are caught in the drift nets, all the other animals who are killed um, in the industry. And when you look at even the shrimping industry has done a lot to devastate the planet as well in terms of breaking down natural barriers that we have to protect the, the islands. I think they came up with this term, sustainable fishing, to make ourselves feel good yeah. about eating fish and continuing to take fish out of the oceans when in fact really it's Sea Shepherd's position that there is no such thing as sustainable fishing. Seafood is not a protein source for uh, a sustainable protein source for the, for the uh, feeding of the planet, of the people on the planet. It's just not. Our founder, Captain Watson, likes to say, if the oceans die, we die. That's not a tagline, that's the truth. Perhaps the only other ecosystem that is being destroyed at such a rapid rate are the world's rainforests. Our global rainforests are essentially the planet's lungs. They breathe in CO2 and exhale oxygen. An acre of rainforest is cleared every second, and the leading cause is to graze animals and grow their feed crops. That is essentially an entire football field cleared every single second. And it is estimated that every day, Close to 100 plant, animal, and insect species are lost due to rainforest destruction. The most biologically and culturally diverse place on the planet is under massive attack right now. The Amazon rainforest itself could be, could be gone in the matter of the next 10 years. One of the biggest causes of deforestation, um, definitely in the Brazilian Amazon, is agribusiness, cattle, cattle grazing, and soy production in particular. It turns out the cattle industry is having the same effect on wildlife in the United States. 
The government has been rounding up horses in mass, and we now have more wild horses and burrows in government holding facility. 50,000 wild horses from burrows in government holding facilities than we have free on the range. Basically, you have ranchers who get to graze on our public lands for a fraction of the going rate. So they're getting like this huge tax subsidy. It's about one fifteenth of the going rate. And what the Bureau of Land Management has to do is say how much forage and water is on the land. And then they divvy it up. They give so much to the cows, so much to you know, wildlife, and so much to the wild horses and burrows. And what we see is the lion's share of the forage and water is going to the livestock industry. And then they scapegoat the horses and burrows and say, oh, there are too many horses and burrows. Let's remove them. I always tell people that wild horses and burros are just one of the victims of the management of our public lands for livestock because we also see the predator killing going on. We know wolves are now being targeted by ranchers to get rid of wolves. Uh, USDA has aircraft and all they do is aerial gunning of predators. So all a rancher does is call up and say, I've got a coyote here. They'll come over and they'll shoot the coyote or they'll shoot the mountain lion or they'll shoot the bobcat. And this is all for ranching. If anyone cares about wild horses and wildlife and public lands and the environment, you can't ignore the livestock, the impact, the negative impact that livestock grazing is having on our public lands in the West. I've added up the costs of animal food production that the producers don't actually bear themselves. These are the hidden costs or the externalized costs that they impose on society. And those are in categories like health care, environmental damage, subsidies, damage to fisheries, uh, and even cruelty. If you take those externalized costs, which are about $414 billion, if, if the meat and dairy industries were re required to internalize those costs, if they had to bear those costs themselves, the costs of the retail prices of meat and dairy would skyrocket. So uh, a $5 carton of eggs would go to $13. A $4 Big Mac would go to $11. The, the problem with these externalized costs being imposed on society is that whether you eat meat or not, whether you're an omnivore or an herbivore, you are paying part of the costs of somebody else's consumption. I was born on the largest dairy farm in the state of Montana in 1938. Uh, grew up my entire life on a, a livestock farm, went to Montana State University, got a degree in agriculture, uh, came back and started a mega uh, agriculture endeavor where I had uh, 10,000 acres of crop, uh, 7,000 head of cattle, and uh, about 30 employees. So uh, when I was on the Oprah show, we had the food disparagement law. Now, the food disparagement law, in my opinion, was unconstitutional, but what it basically said, that it was against the law to say something you knew to be false about a perishable commodity. I didn't say anything on the Oprah show I thought to be false. I went there and told the truth. Now, it took five years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to end up extricating myself from the suits from the, the cattle industry. But uh, if I was to go on the Oprah show today, say exactly the same thing today that I said back then, I would be guilty. And for me, when they were talking about the food disparagement law, it was the fact of whether I told the truth or not. You can go today and tell the truth and you will be guilty because if you cause a disruption in the profits of the animal industry, you're guilty under the Patriot Act. Do you think there should be any concern of us making this documentary? Of course. If you don't realize right now that you're putting your neck on the chopping block, I was beyond frightened to imagine what could possibly happen if I pursued this subject any further. It seemed the only decision to make was to put down the cameras and walk away. But then, I realized this issue was way bigger than any personal concern I could ever have for myself. This was about all life on Earth hanging in the balance of our actions. Now you either live for something 
or die for nothing. I had to stand up and continue on. To feed a person on an all plant-based vegan diet for a year requires just one-sixth of an acre of land. To feed that same person on a vegetarian diet that includes eggs and dairy requires three times as much land. To feed an average U.S. citizen's high-consumption diet of meat, dairy, and eggs requires 18 times as much land. This is because you can produce 37,000 pounds of vegetables on one and a half acres, but only 375 pounds of meat on that same plot of land. I also learned the comparison doesn't end with land use. A vegan diet produces half as much CO2 as an American omnivore, uses 1 11th the amount of fossil fuels, 1 13th the amount of water, and an 18th of the amount of land. After adding this all up, I realized I had the choice every single day to save over 1,100 gallons of water, 45 pounds of grain, 30 square feet of forested land, the equivalent of 20 pounds of CO2, and one animal's life every single day. Renewable energy infrastructure, such as building solar and wind generators all over our country to reduce climate change, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good idea, but it's projected to take at least 20 years and at least minimally $18 trillion to develop. You know, it's important to, to realize that we, we don't have that long of a time frame. We just talked about how it might be a three to four year time frame. So we don't really have 20 years and we really don't have $18 trillion to develop these. So, so um, another solution to climate change, we could, we could stop eating animals. And it could be done today. It doesn't have to take uh, 20 years, and it certainly doesn't have to take $18 trillion because it costs nothing. Quietly and unmistakably, the most powerful thing that someone can do for the environment. Um, no other lifestyle choice has a farther reaching and more profoundly positive impact on the planet and all life on Earth than choosing to, to stop consuming animals and live a vegan lifestyle. Do you realize 75% of Americans consider themselves to be environmentalists. You don't think we couldn't solve this problem in a heartbeat? I'll tell you what, all we would need is for the environmentalists to live what they profess, and we'd be on a new course in the world.